Ladies and gentlemen, from time to time, radio programs of vastly individual and divergent types are presented to advertising agencies, sponsors, and the broadcasting networks, each of them striving to achieve a definite and conclusive effect. There is, for example, the mystery show. <laughs> programs of this sort are presented for thrills, suspense, intrigue. Then there's the comedy show. Hey, Louie, here's one that'll kill you. Why did the chicken cross the aisle? You give up? Because it was a cross-aisle chicken. <laughs> Programs of this sort are presented for laughs, for rib-tickling mirth, for genial good fellowship. The program you're about to hear, Father Knows Best, starring the eminent actor, Mr. Robert Young, is presented for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> In an average town, Springfield, on an average street, Maple, lives an average American family, the Hendersons. The husband, Jim, is very much in love with his wife, Margaret. And they're both quite fond of their three children, Betty, Bud, and Kathleen. Which, I should say, is an average way for parents to feel. On this particular morning, which is an average sort of day, the Hendersons are ready for an average sort of meal, breakfast. Well, they're supposed to be ready, but you know how it is. The average mother calls... Jim! Your breakfast is on the table. And the average answer is... Mother, I can't find my skates. Kathleen, come in and start your breakfast. Oh, breakfast. Don't you understand, Mother? This is a crisis. How can I go to school without my skates? Eat your breakfast, dear, and we'll look for the skates later. Oh, but I have looked for them. I've looked just every place. They simply varnished. Vanished, Kathy. Did you look in the hall under the telephone table? Mother, that's practically the first place I looked. Well, how about the service port? They aren't there. They aren't anywhere. Oh, what am I going to do? You're going to eat your breakfast. I'll run out to the garage and see if you left them there. And don't use too much sugar on your cereal. Look way in the back, Mother, near the magazine. Oatmeal. That's all you ever get around here is oatmeal. Ah! young lady. What about daddy? Skates. <sighs> How many times have I asked you not to leave your skates on the stairs? Oh, is that where they were? Oh, oh golly. I looked simply everywhere and I couldn't find them. Good morning, dear. Did you have a nice... Jim, what did you do to your chin? I came down the stairs on it. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, Jim, your poor chin. Uh, Isn't it wonderful, Mother? Daddy fell down the stairs and found my skate. I did not fall down the stairs. Please, Jim, hold still. How can I fix your chin? I will chin not have you... that child telling people I fell down the stairs. I tripped over her confounded skates. Is that the only place she can find to leave them? Well, she's very sorry, dear, aren't you, Kathy? Okay. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> Daddy. Not now, Kathy. Have some coffee, Jim. It'll make you feel better. Other people have children and they have skates. But other people have discipline in their homes, old-fashioned discipline. The kind of discipline we had in my home when I was a boy. There was a place for everything and Mom. everything in it. Hey, Mom. I'm sorry, dear. We'll try to do better. What is it, bud? I can't find my other shoe. Where'd you put it? Look under the dresser. Okay. <laughs> is that where you generally put his other shoe? Sometimes. Mm. How do you want your eggs this morning, dear? Daddy, oh, I, don't care. I was just wondering... Kathy, this maybe... is a very bad time to bother your father. We'd better let it go for a while. Uh, shall I scramble them, Jim? Oh, yeah, but it's that's important, a... Mother. It's the most important thing in my life. What is? It's really nothing, dear. All it's... right, Kathy, stop looking like Ingrid Bergman and tell me what it is. <laughs> I need two dollars, Daddy. I'm desperate. Two dollars? What for? Wings. What did she say, Margaret? She said wings. That's what I thought. <laughs> Why does she need wings? I have to be an angel. I told them I would. I just have to be. And they cost two dollars. It's the school play, dear. Kathleen said she'd be an angel. Well, I can see they're certainly not casting the type. <laughs> uh, Kathy, you get an allowance, don't you? If you can call it that, a quarter. 
Hmm. When I was nine years old, I had to work for every penny I got. I couldn't walk up to my father and say, I want two dollars for wings. Were you an angel? I most certainly was not. Well, then, you didn't need wings. But I promised I'd be an angel. All right, then find a way to sprout wings without my two dollars. Oh, but, Daddy, I'll be just ruined. Oh, Mother, can We won't you... discuss it any further, Kathy. Your father knows best. How will I face them without wings? <laughs> they were counting on me. Morning, everybody. How's it? What happened to the squirt? Oh, just a minor tragedy. Drink your orange juice, Bud. Say, Dad, I was just thinking... Bud, not now. Let your father read the paper. But I was just going to tell not him about... Not now, dear. Please. Well, but I have to. Gosh, how much time have I got left? You don't mind if I get in on this, do you? <laughs> how much time for what? Well, Dad, we're going on a picnic tomorrow. A whole bunch of us. Fine, have a good time. He can go on picnics, and I can't even have wings. Mm. You treat me like an orphan around here. Nobody even loves me. Oh, Kathy, stop being dramatic. Everyone loves you. Sure, but not two dollars worth. <laughs> Kathleen, your brother's not asking for two dollars. Your brother's not asking for anything. Except permission to use the car. Except permission to use... <laughs> Except what? Well, well, that's what I was going to ask you about. You see, we're, we're all going out in the country, and I told everybody... You're not that... going to use the car. Oh, but, Dad, if I don't, how am I going to go? You have a bicycle, haven't you? <laughs> when I was your age, I was traveling all over the state on my bicycle. With a girl? How can I, how can I take a girl on a bicycle? Jim, I just thought One moment, that... Margaret. James Henderson, Jr., you are 15 years of age, and young men 15 years of age do not go traipsing around the country with girls in my car. But everybody else does, Dad. I mean, they get to use their father's car. Joe Phillips uses his father's car, and he's two months younger than I am. I wouldn't care if he was three months younger and had wings. <laughs> you may not have the car. Bud, you know your father doesn't approve of children driving automobiles. Children? If I want the car, I'm too young. If I want to go to the circus, I'm too old. I wish somebody around here would decide how old I am. We've decided you're too young. Now, that'll be all of that. I'll be an outcast. That's what I'll be. I'll be poisoned with every hunk of date bait in the school. <laughs> Me and a bicycle. But you better eat your eggs before they get ice cold. What a time to think about eggs. Dad, how would it be if no. I... No. But I was just going to... No. But you don't even know... No. I... Whatever it is, no. <laughs> oh, fine. The way I'm treated around here, you'd think I was an orphan. Copycat. I said it first. Quiet, squirt. Kathy, leave your brother alone and finish your milk. But I did say it first, didn't I, Daddy? I said it first and Bud heard me, and he's an old copycat. I am not. I wasn't even listening to you. You were, too. You heard me say it, and then you said it, and you're an old copycat. I am not. You are so. I am not. You are so. Quiet, both of you, quiet. Oh, Margaret, why can't we ever have a peaceful breakfast in this house? I'm sorry. I don't yeah. think it's asking an awful lot. When I was a boy, we had wonderful breakfasts, quiet breakfasts, peaceful breakfasts. We had respect for our elders. Sure, but you didn't have a kid sister like the brat. I'm not a brat. You're a brat if I ever saw one. I am not. You are so. I am not. You are so. Quiet! Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Father. What's the matter with her? <laughs> I know. I was looking out the window at a bird. It was sitting on an egg. <laughs> How'd you ever tear yourself away? <laughs> dear Bud, such a lovable little moron. Betty, dear, you sound so strange this morning. Is anything wrong? Wrong? Oh, Mother, how can you even say that? In this lovely, wonderful world, how could anything be wrong? Hey, Pop, you better hide your wallet. This one's gonna be a pip. <laughs> If you don't do something about Betty, that child... Betty, if you child... don't mind, I believe I can manage my family without your assistance. Kathy? Yes, Daddy? As your father, I'm quite capable of handling my own financial affairs. It may be a strain, but I can manage. Yes, Daddy? And I would prefer that even in moments of stress, you refrain from addressing me as, Hey, Pop. <laughs> okay, Daddy. Finally, I believe I am as well qualified as you to recognize the devious routes employed by your sister... 
in leading up to the announcement that she needs a new dress. That's telling her, Pop. What? I mean, Daddy. <laughs> You're all very amusing, but I don't need a new dress. Well, dear, are you sure you feel all right? I feel fine. Betty, you... you don't want any money? No, Father. Why? You don't want to borrow the car? Of course not. Well, <laughs> at least there's one sensible child in this family. Betty, I'm proud of you. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. What this country needs is more children who leave their fathers alone at the breakfast table. I think I'll have another cup of coffee, Margaret. All right, dear. There you are. Thank you. Well, Betty, what's the good word in your little world? Oh, just the most wonderful thing has happened, Father. I'm going to be married. Oh, yeah. Yes. Close your eyes up over your head and quickly run. Oh. Hold on the back. One more. One more. Don't stand there. Do something. Do you want him close to this? Jim. I'm all right, actually. You're going to be fine, Ted. Just fine. Well, stop beating me on the back or I'll never be all right. Oh, but Mother told me... I did me... not tell you to break your father's spine. Well, you told me to pound him. With your hand, not your books. <laughs> oh. Bud, you're going to be late for school. I get it. Come on, Kathy. Come on, where? You're going to school. I don't have to leave for ten minutes. Oh, that's what you think. Hey, stop pulling me, you brute. See I you have later, to get everybody. my Father! <laughs> All right, Betty. Now, uh, what was that newsy little item you dropped into the middle of my coffee? You? Oh, you mean about getting married. Isn't it wonderful? Margaret, did you know anything about this? Not a word, Jim. I still don't. Betty, you're joking, aren't you? Joking? Mother, do you think I joke about the most sacred thing in a woman's life? Jim, she isn't joking. <laughs> well, that's nice. Betty, you uh, wouldn't mind giving us a little more information, would you? You know, just in case we want to get in touch with you later. I don't know what you mean, Father. Well, just for start, who is it? Who's who? The boy, my prospective son-in-law. What's his name? Billy... He's wonderful. Oh, Betty, not Billy Smith. Just wonderful. Which one is he? Oh, you know, Jim, the one who hates football players, the one Betty thinks is aesthetic. Aesthetic? <laughs> the one I think it is, that's a new way of spelling anemic. <laughs> Billy is delicate. You have to be delicate if you have a beautiful soul. Well, that's exactly what this family needs, somebody with a beautiful soul. <laughs> Margaret, I have to get out of the office. Explain to Betty that she'll be happier if she waits. Make certain. You know, the usual woman-to-woman -woman talk. All right, dear. Oh, you don't have to worry about us, Father. Billy and I talked it all over last night, and we both decided against a hasty marriage. We intend to wait. That's fine. I'll be home at the usual time, dear. All right, Jim. We're if not going to be married until Saturday. If you... <laughs> Saturday? Uh-huh. Saturday night. We were going to make it in the afternoon, but we decided to go to the basketball game first. <laughs> this is an emergency. Put your hat down. I'll put more than my hat down. Betty, this is the most ridiculous piece of conversation I've ever heard. Father, you mean you don't approve? Now, there's the first intelligent remark you've made since you got up. I most decidedly don't approve. But I don't understand. You've always liked Billy's father. You mean Hector Smith? Of course I like Hector Smith. He's one of my best clients. Why don't you marry him? <laughs> Betty, your father and I have always thought Just a you... moment, Margaret. I'll handle this. Betty, you're 17 years of age. You're in your first year at the university. You will not marry Billy Smith or anyone else until after your graduation. That's final. Graduation? But that's three and a half years. I'll be over 21. Why, why the best years of my life will be gone. Well, darling, we can always have Bud push you up to the altar in a wheelchair. <laughs> you're laughing at me, and I think you're horrid. You're just old-fashioned, both of you. You've forgotten what it is to be young and in love. You don't seem to understand that things are different now. Oh, Betty, nothing's any different. Things like that don't change. They do, too. Things change all the time. People change, customs change, everything changes. Only you won't admit it. Oh, darling, why don't you listen to your father? Things are no different now than they were when we were your age. The young people wore different clothes and they sang different songs, but fundamentally they were the same, and even then boys and girls didn't rush headlong into marriage. Not until they were ready for it. You bet they didn't. They listened to their fathers. They were willing to benefit from a lifetime of experience. Why, when I was courting your mother, I mother, remember when... Mother, how old were you when you married father? Well, I... Yes, mother. I was 17. But that was different. Why? <laughs> well, because things were different in those days. The, uh... <laughs> the people were different. The times were different. You said they were. Well, they were. Uh, some of them were. 
Some of them weren't, and some of them were. Only yeah. the ones that weren't were more than the, uh... Margaret. Betty, um, don't you think it would be a nice idea if Billy and his family were to have dinner with us tonight? Oh, Mother, would you? Really? Margaret, I don't want the Smiths for dinner tonight or any other night. I think the idea of a dinner for the Smiths is not only ridiculous, but unnecessary. I forbid the marriage, and that's that. Oh, Jim, you know you like having people in for dinner. The Smiths are very pleasant, and you might be able to sell Hector some more insurance. Yeah, that's right. I might have said. <laughs> but look, Margaret, I'm going to have a tough day at the office. I couldn't take a dinner tonight. Let's make it next week. Uh, next month. Dear, we can't put it off for even a day. I'll call the Smiths and see if they can make it. Shall I tell them dinner will be at 7.30? 7.30? What's the matter with 6 o'clock? I'll be starved by 7.30. Jim, it just isn't done. Well, it's going to be done tonight. We'll have dinner at 6. I'll ask them to be prompt, dear, at 7.30. Mother, can we dress? I mean, can I wear my new dinner gown? Can I, Mother? Oh, please, can I? Betty, there will be no dressing for dinner. But, Father, I... Mother, please. I'm sorry, darling. You know I never contradict your father. After all, your father knows best. It's been a long day for the Hendersons. The specter of a fair young child, married and gone before her time, has hung like a pall throughout the day. It would have, that is, if the Hendersons hadn't been so busy. Jim, you see, had a hectic day at the office. Six? Why, you robber, how about the two strokes in back of that tree? And don't tell me those snakes followed you over from the last hole. Uh -huh. At the office. Bud has been involved in the intricacies of a higher education. But Margie, it's healthful riding on a bicycle. Why, look at all the fresh air you'll get and, and the beautiful muscles. We could even... Margie? Hello, Margie? Hello? Kathy has been involved in serious plans for the future. What do you mean they don't take girls in the Foreign Legion? <laughs> I'll bet they do, especially without wings. You just wait, you'll see. Margaret? Well, Margaret has been very busy cooking an extra special dinner for the Smiths. And if there's one thing Margaret can do, it's cook. Yes, sir, Margaret, if there's one thing you can do, it's cook. That's what I always say. You see? Now we can proceed. Uh, proceed. Thank you, Hector. Would you care for another piece of pie? Oh, Margaret, please. I've already had two helpings. You have three. Kathy. <laughs> Uh, how about uh, another cup of coffee, Heck? <laughs> Nothing like a cup of Margaret's piping hot coffee. Well, if you insist... Hector? I guess I'd better not, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, doctor's orders. Oh, sure, sure. Well, how about you, Doctor? Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, no. One cup of coffee is quite sufficient. Well, I'm a two-cup man myself. You know, I was reading just the other day... Jim, about a fellow it's to... not that we don't enjoy your informative little talk. But I was under the impression that this dinner had, well, shall I say, a more or less definite purpose. Hmm? Oh, you mean, oh, sure, absolutely. You know, I had a long talk with Heck before dinner. Jim, dear, I hate to interrupt, but uh, don't you think it would be a good idea if Bud took Kathy to the movies? In the middle of the week, I certainly do not. I, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, Bud, uh, how'd you like to take Kathy to the movies? Oh, boy! I wouldn't. I can't think of anything I'd rather do less. Well, that's fine. Here's a dollar. Have a good time. Oh, Dad, do I have to? Yes, you have to. That'll be enough of that, Kathy. But I'm surprised you ought to be glad to take your sister to the movies. I'd rather go with a gorilla. <laughs> you don't know what she's like. She never even looks at the picture. She sits around backwards and stares at the people. <laughs> They're funnier. I like to look at their faces. All right, bud, get going, and come home right after the show. If I'm still alive. Good night, everybody. Come on, Stuart. Hey, stop pulling me. Why do you always have to pull me? <laughs> Lovely children. They mean well, I think. Uh, Mother. Yes, Betty? Mother, Billy and I have been talking, and... Billy, you tell them. 
Um, <laughs> well, uh, we, yeah. Would it be all right if we went to the movies? Oh, no. Oh, I should say not. We're here for a purpose, a very definite purpose. Yes, sir. We have a problem to discuss, and we're going to do it right now. Frankly, I think the whole thing is idiotic. Imagine discussing a ridiculous subject like marriage with these, these children. We're not children, Mother. We're quite adult. We have adult minds, adult bodies, adult passions, adult... William! <laughs> I said before, Hector and I had a long talk just a little while ago. Right, Heck? Right. And we're in complete agreement on the subject, right? Right. We both feel that open discussion is the only sensible procedure in a matter of this sort, right? Right. Hector, stop being so agreeable. Right. I, I mean, yes, dear. Myra, Elizabeth, Hector and I have agreed on what we consider a very sound solution to the entire problem. We have decided to permit Betty and Bill to be married immediately. Jimmy! Oh, holy cow! I've never heard anything so outrageous in my entire life. Hector, get your hat. William, we're leaving this instant. I'm not going, Mother. As soon as we... William! I'm 18, Mother. I've got a mind of my own. I love Betty, and we're going to be married. Well, I never... All right, now that's settled, you're going to be married. Oh, Mother, isn't it wonderful? I, I don't know. Yes, sir, nothing like marriage and responsibility to set a man straight. Uh, where do you kids figure on living? After you're married, I mean. Oh, well, uh, we sort of figured we'd move Mother, in. couldn't Kathy move in with Bud? Then Billy and that's I That's ridiculous, have Betty. You've got to have a home of your own, a place for your roots to take hold and grow. Right, Heck? Right. <laughs> Well, gosh, that'd be kind of expensive. Uh, and on my allowance... Oh, uh, don't worry about your allowance, Billy. Married men don't go around taking allowances from their fathers. They don't. <laughs> of course not. They're too proud to be supported by their fathers. I'm not. <laughs> Of course you are. You'll work, you'll sweat and slave, but you'll come home every week with a juicy pay envelope for your little wife. Isn't that sweet? But I, I don't know how to do anything. That's not so. Poets make a living, and Mother, he writes the most beautiful poetry. I'm sure he does, dear. Billy, recite the one about my hair. It's just wonderful. <laughs> oh, Betty. <laughs> well, it is. Raven tresses on a lofty brow. Swept by the winds of time. Isn't that beautiful? Well, you could get a small house. A uh, poet size. Say, Jim, I saw an apartment advertised the other day. Be just right for the kids. A uh, uh, hundred and a quarter a month, furnished. Of course, that's without utilities. You know, gas, electricity, telephone. And food. Don't forget food. That's right. And laundry and cleaning. Oh, they won't have to worry about that, Jim. Don't you remember when we were first married, I did all our laundry and cleaning and cooking. I'm sure Betty will want to do at least that for Billy. Won't you, dear? I guess so. Uh, Betty. Yes, Billy? Could I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> In privately? Of course. Will you excuse us, please? We'll be right back. It's all right, kids. Take all the time you need. We're in no hurry. Are, uh, are they gone? I think so. <laughs> Jim, we did it. Yes, sir. By golly, we did it. Oh, it was nothing, really. <laughs> Jim, stop looking so smug. What was nothing? The psychological attack I planned for tonight. Yeah. You see, I felt our wisest possible course, from a tactical standpoint, lay in a feint to their left flank and a drive through the middle. Do you follow me? Yes, dear. Right up to the part where you started to talk. <laughs> Margaret, the whole thing is elemental. Yes, and very clever. We pretend to give our consent. That's the feint. Believe me, I almost did. Then we hit them with both barrels. The cost of living, the struggle for existence. They retire in disorder. Their armored units are smashed. Their rear guard is demolished. What a fight. Dear, dear, the enemy is back. Hmm? Oh, uh, come on in, kids. Everything all settled? I think so, Father. <laughs> Pretty much settled, sort of. That's fine. Now, uh, what did you finally decide? You know very well what we were forced to decide. We have to wait. Why... Betty, I thought that you and Billy... Mr. Smith, you don't have to continue the ridiculous performance you and my father were putting on. Betty! 
Oh, Father, you can be so juvenile at times, really. A partner for a hundred and a quarter a month. We know some kids have one for 45. You older people ought to get straightened out on the simple facts of life before you start fooling around with psychology. Jim, your mouth is open. Oh, well, uh, now see here, both of you kids. Just a I... moment, Jim. Betty, exactly what do you and Billy intend to do? Well, as long as our families are determined to exercise parental prerogatives, we'll just have to wait until we're financially self-sufficient. Right, Billy? Right. Well, I never... Well, Betty, how about how long do you figure it's going to take you and Billy to become uh, financially independent? Mm, a few years. Well, <laughs> that gives us a little time to look around for a wedding present, eh, Hank? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jim. A couple of years, it's a long time. A lot of things can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, Hector, how about another cup of coffee? Oh, thank you, Margaret. I think I can use one. You know, Margaret, I'm very relieved. I'm so afraid of hasty marriages. Don't mind us, Mother. Just go on talking as if we weren't here. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It's just that I was so afraid you were going to make the same mistake I did. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't exactly say you made a mistake, Elizabeth. Heck's a pretty nice guy. Yeah, well, thanks, Jim. Uh, you can send me a check in the morning. <laughs> I suppose I have been fairly fortunate. But, of course, people aren't always that lucky when they marry beneath them. I suppose not, but when they what... Uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, we'd better go. It's, uh, it's getting Wait late. a minute, Hag. What was that crack you made, Elizabeth? Well, after all, my mother was a Stuyvesant, and I certainly... In other words, you think Betty isn't good enough for your son. I'm sure that isn't what Elizabeth meant, Jim. That's what she said. Well, isn't that what you said, Lizzie? <gasps> <laughs> Don't you dare call me Lizzie. Why not? If you can say my daughter isn't good enough for that puny excuse of a son... Now, nah, just a minute, Jim. Writing poetry... What makes you think he's such a bargain? My boy has a fine head on his shoulders. What shoulders? <laughs> I've seen better heads on a small beer. <laughs> is that so? Yes, that's so. This is what comes from slumming. Slumming? Now you listen to me, Elizabeth Smith. Your mother may have been a Stuyvesant, but my father spent half his life picking your father out of the gutter. And he wasn't lying down just because he was tired. I think I'm going to faint. Hector, I'm going to faint. Go ahead, dear. I'll catch you. You ought to be ashamed upsetting my mother with your vulgar insinuations. Vulgar? Why, you little pipsqueak. If you were my son, I'd vulgar you so hard you wouldn't sit down for a week. Fortunately, I am not your son. Peasant? Peasant? Don't you dare call my father a peasant, Billy Smith. Don't you dare. Well, that's what he is. He is not. He certainly is. Well, I'd rather be a peasant than a pipsqueak. Don't you call me a pipsqueak. I will if I want to. Pipsqueak. Peasant? I never want to see you again as long as I live. Well, you won't if I can help You're it. You're just an Hector. Uh, just a minute, dear. Say, Jim. I, uh, sorry I lost my temper, Heck. Oh, that's all right. Say, uh, Jim, that, uh, that thing about, uh... Say, Jim, that, that, uh, thing about picking Elizabeth's father out of the gutter is, uh, is that true? Sure, it's true. Why? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, just wait till she pulls that Stuyvesant stuff on me again. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, thanks for a lovely evening, folks. Uh, come on, Lizzie. <laughs> yes, dear. And, uh, Billy? Uh, yes, Father. Come on, Pipsqueak. <laughs> Well, we started with breakfast, and we might as well finish the same way. Let's drop in at the Hendersons at breakfast time the very next morning. The average children are still getting dressed. The average mother is racing around the kitchen. And the average father... Jim, where are you going? I got a rush, dear. Can't stop for breakfast. Just time to catch the bus. The bus? But I thought you Never said... mind what I said. Just tell Bud if he gets one scratch on that car, I'll brain him. <laughs> All right, dear. I'll be home at the usual time. Be a good girl. I'll try, dear. Oh, Jim? Yes? Uh, where did you leave the car keys? The keys? Oh, they're on the dresser. Uh, on top of Kathy's two bucks. <laughs> Jim? Now what's the matter? Remind me to tell you, you're an angel. I'm a dope. You are not. I've got witnesses. <laughs> oh, well, why should I argue? After all, Father knows best. 
Members of our cast are Robert Young as Jim Henderson, June Whitley as Margaret Henderson, Rhoda Williams as Betty, Ted Donaldson as Bud, Norma Jean Nielsen as Kathy. Robert Young will soon be seen in RKO's Baltimore Escapade. Ted Donaldson may be seen in Warner Brothers' Decision of Christopher Blake. Others in tonight's cast were Virginia Gordon, Herb Vigran, and Sam Edwards. Music was written and conducted by Roy Bargain. Father Knows Best was conceived and written by Ed James. Entire production under the direction of Herb Sanford. Bill Foreman speaking.